Revenger Geese Tier 1 confirmed. Spread the word. Take a look at who I am now. Welcome to the Solemn Vanguard channel. Today we are doing a Revenger Geese deck profile. Now before getting into it, if you want to see my Japan vlog from Worlds, go to the link in the description or click somewhere here, whatever. I put it on my secondary channel because it's very long and it's not only Vanguard, it's just all of Japan basically. Now getting into the actual deck profile, every single format, no matter how uncompetitive, I build a Revenger deck. Revengers were my very first deck, so I'm kind of attached to them. So that's why I will always build them, even if they're bad. But I will always attempt to make them as good as possible. So this format, I believe the very best variant of Revenger is either Geese Revenger or something else that I may cover in the future. Now do note, this is still not competitive. Like, I have fun with this at locals. I will steal some actual wins at locals, but I won't bring this to a BCS. This won't top or anything like that, but it is incredibly fun. I think I've been smiling and laughing the whole fucking evening yesterday when I was playing with this, and I think I actually ended up being 50-50 as far as win rate goes, which is absolute insanity. But yeah, Revenger Geese Tier 1 confirmed. Getting into the list. Of course, we start off with our one Neon Geese. I think we all know what it does by now. If you get to your five phase-up Zeroths, you will win the game the next turn by dealing five damage, unless your opponent was at zero. It's a funny win con. It can be played in many decks and you can cheese some funny wins. However, it is inherently awful given the current format. For some reason, I still see many people going, oh, Geese is so broken. I'm like, no. Fucking Azel destroys the shit out of it. Unless you get incredibly lucky, Azel will eat you alive, even if they brick themselves. So now for the Revenger portion of the deck. We have four of our Abyss Legion. Yes, of course, we have to have it maxed out, secret rare. The Legion does a few things for you. First of all, it turns on Revenger support. So cards like Mar and Mana, we will get into them later, will start working because you have a Revenger Vanguard. Apart from that, it's also a Legion, meaning you get to recycle triggers. So if you get start getting heals in hand, you just G-guard or regular guard with them, send them back to deck, go into Legion, and that way, get some more triggers more easily, heal a bit more and so forth. And alternatively, but this doesn't come up often, he can also restand, meaning if you want to have your four drive checks without striding, um, that's also an option. However, you can only use that when you're going up against a deck that doesn't care about how much counter blast it has, because you do have to swing at Vanguard to first attack, meaning you can't be damage denying when you go for that move. You also don't run that many Revengers, so you can get there, but it can be a bit clunky at times. The most important part is that you have the Revenger name turning on the manas and then also being able to go Legion so you can send back those triggers. Now in my old Revenger deck I only ran those four grade threes, however that is a bit too clunky given this format, so I also have to Luard. Now, what Luard does is he has a free ultimate stride cost. In case you can't get your second Revenger Abyss to your hand for some reason, you can literally keep this in your hand as your trump card and then ride it ultimate stride and that way get into your geese. Apart from that, you're also running a bit more grade threes than my old Revenger build, which only had four. So even if you miss ride into this one, that's not too bad. However, there's one more awesome thing. Since everyone is running 12 and 13k grade threes right now, you can swing under them with Luart. This is something you can't do with the Revenger, sadly, because he gets plus two when attacking a Vanguard. I hate this so much. I wish he didn't have that skill. But so, since he does have have that skill. If you're going up against a deck that's really, really reliant on Counter Blast, you can use this as your main ride and keep on swinging under them so you can um, damage deny them very well even when they don't have rear guards. Then we have our four Blaster Dark. Now the reason we run Blaster Dark is because he has Twin Drive on grade 2. 
at least usually. There's not many people who really call their field full, and if they do, you can now swing at rear guards. If they call their field full in the back row, they just gave up cards just to turn this card off, and so you're already winning tempo-wise. Apart from that, he's a 10k body, so it's harder to be rushed. Now, if they want to call down like grade twos to swing at you, those grade twos will also need boosters, unless they're a force clan with 10ks themselves. Since you get twin drive, you can also play the grade two game much better than your opponent because you will be seeing more triggers meaning you get closer to geese so if your opponent is trying to grade 2 game you well you're gonna win that game because you're first of all you can guard way easier because you're 10k and secondly you see so many triggers that you may be at geese by the time both of you hit three however if you're trying to damage deny this card is a very very bad ride so if you're in a matchup where damage denial is the most important thing you may not want to write this card then we have four willy revenger mana this card is the one you want to ride when you try to damage deny because it's an 8k body which is really nice however that's not the main reason we run her the main reason we run her is but because she can fetch any revenger from our deck that is grade one so you call her and then you get to search a specific grade one from your deck i'll quickly uh get it for you you call your mar behind her mar skill will activate counter blast one revenger and then you can look for a copy of your vanguard from your deck and add it to your hand this makes it so you will always have your ultimate stride cost so you will have your revenger boy on the vanguard or maybe even have a stride on top of it you will then go into mana fetch a mar and then mar will fetch you your ultimate stride fodder for when you reach it Apart from that, this card will then go back to the bottom of the deck at the end of the turn. However, if you strode into something like Aura Geyser, you can now sack these two to get two extra cards to hand. Those are two extra cards that you got out of calling only one, so that's a plus one already. Apart from that, by calling her, you already replenished her own call because you looked for a grade 3 revenger by calling this one and then your own field will be empty as well after the aura geyser dragon attack what you can also do if aura geyser dragon is not a good move for example he has to attack the vanguard sometimes you don't want to do that you can also use drag abyss luar to sack this card and then find two other ones so this one doesn't go back to bottom deck meaning you don't ruin your chances of seeing a trigger mana is actually the main reason why I thought Geese could be a cool option in Revenger, because you always get your ultimate stride fodder cost, and that's something not many clans can do. Like OTT Geese can get to their ultimate stride fodder cost because they draw so much. Angel Geese can only do that because no CL can filter for no CL cards pretty well. Himiko Geese actually has a huge issue with this. So very often Himiko will be at their five and then not have the fucking grade 3 to do the ultimate stride fodder. They won't have the second Himiko because they don't draw that much and they don't have any way to actually filter for it. So it's actually really cool that Revenger does have that, giving at least one okay argument to run Revenger Geese for some reason. Finally, our final grade 2, we have three Blaster Dark Revenger Abyss. This boy is the Legion mate for our grade 3 Abyss. And of course, he's maxed out. Like, why the hell would he not be? He can pop something in the back row. So if you for some reason have something in your opponent's back row that you want to get rid of, this is always an option, but overall he's just there to go into Legion and it's one more Revenger name. Now one thing I did consider is actually running the Revenger Interceptor that gets plus 5k when intercepting because he's also 8k, so you can swing under your opponent more easily, you have a bit more guard, and he's also Revenger. So one option I actually really considered is going um, two of this, one Interceptor, or even two Interceptor and only one of this just so I can Legion with it, because well, it doesn't really come up often, usually I just do it to put a the triggers back so that's something i kind of considered but i haven't really tried it then we have four namain reason for this is it's actually really cool to have a 5k body because you get to swing under anything your opponent can ride a 6k and you will still swing under it now of course you are very very prone to being rushed so do watch out but then on the flip side you will be able to swing at their rear guards because they just had to call something unless they're great nature beyond that she also tins the deck meaning you have a higher chance of seeing triggers she's also 10k shield so that's very handy because obviously you need to survive and she also builds field so let's say you have this one card you can call it use it get another one and then sack them for your aura geyser meaning you went plus two to hand for only a minus one from your hand 
since she fetched something for free. Also, if you get her very early and you manage to fill your field with Helena mains, you can also Ogma your opponent, because that's a pretty hilarious thing to me. Like, if they weren't calling cards to field because they don't want you to damage the item, now they'll suddenly lose lots of cards from their hand. Apart from that, yes, there are many, many reasons why certain cards are in here. You can always Nemain into another Nemain, and then you can use Jellido, the G-Guard, to get rid of them, have huge shield and draw of it. Next up, we have three Mar. He is the boy that fetches our grade 3 ultimate stride fodder. And apart from that, he's also a revenger name and he's a 6k. So again, you'll be able to swing under other people's 7k and this way damage an item. You could bump this up to 4. At first I did run 4. I just noticed that I didn't always have the revenger counter blast to actually use him. So his usefulness kind of was like, sometimes sure, but overall you can fetch him anyway. Like you have your Dragobus Luard who can fetch him and you have your mana who can fetch him. So if you need him and you have the revenger counter blast you will get to him if you run three anyway next up we have two stride folder i'd like to run more kind of because running six grade threes we don't always have enough but this is a fine-ish number it's just that we're fighting for a lot of space we're trying to run a lot of great one decks because that's one of the powerful things about shadow paladin now if this was a strict luar deck you wouldn't even need these but i'm really set on running revenger geese for some reason so we still need two of this next two blaster javelin he's a 10k shield again very handy he also lets you draw a card when placed if there's more than just him lying on the field if you drag abyss luard and you call cards you also get to refund costs. So what will sometimes happen is you will call a mana, mana fetches a Mar, Dragabus Luard gets rid of the Mar, and then fetches a Blaster Javelin and something else, and you will get to draw and really refund a lot of costs in this way, preserve hand and survive almost anything. So this is just a really free plus one that the deck can use, and it's also a 10k shield. Then we have two Honolly. Of course, this deck is super afraid of multi-attack since it's geese, so we can't get defensive triggers. So having access to Honolly is very handy. Just like I said, we have Dragabus Luard, so we can always fetch this anyway. Uh, one is kind of too scary for me, Two is a good number. I would run four if there's a deck that can multi-attack like crazy at the beginning of the game already. Azel is one of those decks, but I feel like this deck will auto lose to that anyway. So there's no point in completely building against that. Also, it's a 6k power body, meaning you can swing under things. So just even more goodness to damage deny your opponent. Then we have two of this. Ignore her skill. She's a vanilla in this deck. We use her because she's a 10k shield, which is again great, just like an old trigger. And she's a 6k body. So you get to swing under things and guard with it for a lot. So this is just either a right target or a big shield, nothing else. Once we get the new sword breaker, she will probably become the new sword breaker or maybe like one sword breaker and one more Mar, something like that. For now, she's a damage denying swinger and otherwise a big shield. For our final grade one, one sword breaker. If you go into Dragabus Luard early, you will want to sack something and then call her and a javelin and just draw two cards for free that way. It's a very, very solid plus. It's better than Aura Geyser very often. If you have the resources to go Dragabus into this and Javelin, it's better than Aura Geyser because you can actually attack your opponent's rear guard, which is much better than attacking a Vanguard because you want to be damage denying at least against certain decks. Not every deck cares. And then apart from that, again, she's a 6k body, so you can damage deny. So as you notice, a lot of cards in this deck in the grade one lineup are 6k and that's ideal for that sweet damage denial. Then we have two 15k shield crits. Now I would love to run more because it's just very, very good. It's a really nice thick shield. I would love to run more, but I can't because I need Revenger names. So again, here we are running two Revenger crits. We are running this purely for the shield, 10k is better than 5, and it has the Revenger name, meaning you will turn on your Mar, and Mar is really key in getting that ultimate stride fodder. Then we're running 4 Revenger draw, now the difference between V draw triggers and G draw triggers is nothing in a Geese deck, so that's pretty sweet. So we have our Revenger names, we have some more draws to survive, so we turn on the Mar, and we're also able to maybe use your Legion stand if that's something that your situation calls for or we can use another stride that I will be going over later down the line but mostly it's just a revenger name to get that more active then we're running four of the Maklir draw PG now most people will probably go nuts and say oh why aren't you running Ezra's 
And I agree to a certain extent. At first I ran Ezra's because first of all, she's a 6k body, meaning you can swing under your opponent, and she can also recycle. However, I started noticing, generally games just don't last long enough to recycle. And so then you're essentially taking up four super valuable grade one slots and overall running less shield because these have to be draw triggers. Like this deck needs to run eight draws, meaning you would have to run four more 5k shields and you would be replacing stuff in your grade one lineup that are 10k shields. So if you forget about Ezra's skill for one second, you are losing a lot of shield just to run her. And that's not worth it, given that we almost never get to the recycle skill for some reason. Like games just don't last long enough. Like premium is a fast paced game and you just don't have the luxury of using it all the time. Luard can use it all the time because they can actually call Ezra's with Dragabus Luard on the first stride if they want to turbo into it. But this deck doesn't have that luxury. So for that reason, we're not running the Ezra's. Uh, maybe one day it will make sense, but for now, this is a much more stable variant of the deck. Then we're running four V heals. I would love to run the Revenger heal, but honestly, I am terrified of losing one Zymon Geese because all your G guards shut off. And so the 20k shield is very key. I will keep experimenting. Maybe at some point I will just add in the Revenger heals to make that Revenger spice just a little more consistent. But for now, this is the more rigid version of the deck. Then getting into the G zone, we run five Zeroth Dragons because we're required to because of Geese. Doesn't matter which ones you run. Uh, my Zoa just happens to be in my Great Nature deck, so that's why I'm not running it. And there's nothing to be explained here. Then we run the Aura Geyser package. Now, this is a bit weird, because you obviously can't use them all. Normally, you would have to run four, but we don't have room. So, when you stride into it, you know I will only be able to use one, and one will become a dead card. So, either you go into Doomed, flip a dragon, and you have a dead dragon in the G-Zone, or you go into Dragon, flip a dragon, and you have a dead Doomed in the G-Zone. That's a choice you make. You never ever go into two anyway, so there's no point in running more. This is just a versatile package. If you see, oh, Aura Geyser makes sense at this point, but I can attack a rear guard, then you will go into Doomed. If you see, oh, my opponent actually doesn't even need to counter blast, then you can go into Dragon and you swing at your opponent's Vanguard. Next up, two Dragabyss. I never go into more, especially Especially because if you go into Drag Abyss, you will often call a Sword Breaker, meaning all your soul is gone. One for this, one for the Sword Breaker. This is just a great first stride to get some free advantage by getting the Javelins, by getting the Sword Breakers, by cheating out a Honolly, by getting a Mar. Just so many call targets you have with this card that all have amazing on plays effects. Honestly, as far as fetchable targets go, this deck gets more value out of the Drag Abyss than the Luar deck does because we have the Mar, we have the Sword Breaker. And we can call the Javelin at all times, whereas Luard really can't. Luard needs to preserve Counterblast for Dagda plays, which means they can't call the Javelins, they can't call the Honolis. This deck doesn't care, we don't have Dagda. And so because of that, we can call whatever the hell we want with Dragabyss and not worry. Next we run one Ogma. This is just a really fun card when your opponent desperately isn't calling rear guards and you have been the maining for quite a bit. You just empty your own field, your opponent has to discard hella cards and you get a draw of it. It doesn't come up very often because it is Ritual 5. However, it's just a fun tech that sometimes comes up. Then we have one Revenger Boy. Oh, this card is old. It's a Fighter's Collection one, right? Yeah, it is the very first Fighter's Collection. So what this does is, if you have a Revenger Heart card, you retire a Revenger from your rearguard circle, and then you get to fetch a grade 1 or lower Revenger with it. The only moment where you use this is if you're in a resource situation, and you need to get your Mar to get your ultimate stride fodder. So you will stride, go into this, kill either a Mar that's already there, one of your draw triggers because you run four, so you're likely to see them, maybe even a crit. Call a Mar from deck, use its skill to fetch yourself an Abyss, and that way you have your ultimate stride fodder ready. Again, doesn't come up often, but when it does come up, you're very happy that you're running one. Then we run three Plot Maker, um, a very versatile G guard. It's always 25k, basically. We're not running the Dark Fail because we don't have the soul for it. As I said, often you will go into Drag Abyss and then into Sword Breaker and then your soul is gone, basically. So you don't have the soul for Dark Fail, meaning Plot Maker is the second best thing. 
And then finally, we are running the one jelly though, because if you went into Drag Abyss and caught something like a Javelin and a Sword Breaker, they are now dead. So you use jelly dough to guard with them, you have a very big guard, and then you get to refund that cost. Apart from that, the same thing for the main. If you've been maining out lots of the mains and Ogma wasn't the option, you can just jelly dough with them away and then get some card advantage out of it. So that was my Revenger Geese deck profile. Honestly, this is very fun to brew. That's one of the amazing things about premium. You don't necessarily have to make something super competitive. You can just use the insanely large card pool and homebrew something. And it doesn't have to be amazing because it's just super fun to build. Apart from that, having to look through all these cards and trying to find new interactions, new ways to improve old things also makes you better at deck building competitively because suddenly you have to find new interesting innovations that aren't just a net deck from Japan. So overall, I really loved making this. I had a lot of fun with this. Obviously, there's a few things you could uh, play around with. So more Mars. Like I said, the 8k Interceptor Grade 2 is really fun. You could al also just make this a Luar deck. But that's really boring to me anyway. And yeah, just Revenger Geese Tier 1. Spread the word. Hope you found this interesting. If you did, please subscribe to the Solemn Vanguard channel and click the bell button to stay up to date. Like the video. If you like the video, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I will see you soon. Ciao.